Beep for Hody and Straight Black Pride, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, DC Radical One, with another radical report. And today we're going to uh, update the case of one Jason Roger Hope, also known as DJ Kid. For those who remember, Jason Roger Pope was charged with sex trafficking of minors and various other offenses I believe they settled on 14 counts in this case uh, Jason Roger Pope became um, notorious for allegedly being HIV positive and having um, relations with over 600 black women for those who are not familiar with this case, this is Mr. Pope here on the screen. Now, Mr. Pope, also known as DJ Kid, was a popular DJ in Florence, uh, Florence County, South Carolina. And I've seen pictures of him previously with such celebrities as Serena Williams. And I just found that interesting. And so, for those who don't remember this case, we're going to look back at the original charges and then we're going to uh, update the case and we can see what's going on. So let's start here from, again, the original charges back in 2019. That's correct. It's been nearly four years since this case began. It says here, a well-known Florence man charged with human trafficking earlier this year may have had possible victims further back than deputies are currently investigating, according to records handed over to ABC 15. Jason Roger Pope, 42, popularly known as DJ Kid, was charged with three counts of trafficking in persons, three counts of first-degree criminal sexual assault, second-degree criminal sexual assault, I mean sexual conduct with a minor, promoting prostitution of a minor and kidnapping back in August 29th, back on August 29th, excuse me, of 2019. Warren say Pope recruited women and underage girls and had sex with them on various occasions between September 2017 and July 2019, providing the victims with money and gifts in exchange. They also say he held some victims against their will in Darlington and Florence in order to have them perform these illicit acts. The warrants say Pope knew some of the victims were under the age of 18, although they, although they did not say if any of the women held against their will were under age. The additional accusations are included in incident and supplementary reports obtained by ABC 15 Investigates through a Freedom of Information Act request. ABC 15 asked for all the incidents involving Pope which, about which police wrote reports, no matter how he was involved. The Florence County Sheriff's Office provided 14 incidents ranging from December 2011 to April 2019. Pope was listed as, as the subject or suspect in nine of the incidents and the complainants or victim in four. He was involved in one of them as a third party. Five of the nine reports where Pope was listed as the subject were sexually related. Only one filed on Christmas Eve 2011 involved an adult woman. In them, he was accused of sending inappropriate text. The first of the four involving underage girls happened shortly before that, on December 4th, 2011. The report says two girls aged 13 and 16 walked into a hospital and told doctors they had um, unprotected relations 
with a then 34 year old I'm gonna repeat that I'm gonna repeat that again the first of the four involving underage girls happened shortly before that on December 4th 2011 the report says two girls aged 13 and 16 walked into a hospital and told doctors they had unprotected relations with the then 34 year old the girls told police pope had given them marijuana and money in exchange for these activities now let's stop right there i had heard um in a previous video report that i can't find now where a neighbor said that there were activities going on surrounding mr pope much earlier but i had not actually seen this report where a 13 year old girl told the police now 12 years ago in 2011 about mr pope's activities and nothing was done at that time he would go on to do this type of behavior with underage girls for an additional nearly eight years this is important brothers and sisters because i don't think this information has really gotten out to the public or i should say it hasn't reached the national audience this is covered by the local media but i had not heard this before and it just goes to show that it's highly possible given mr pope's influence and his seeming popularity in the local area and as we'll see the length of this trial that there may be something even bigger going on that no one wants to talk about an investigator was called to the scene but the public portion of the report ends prior to this story being published Florence County Deputy Sheriff Glenn Kirby said both deputies listed on the report no longer work for the deputy for the department, excuse me, and staff was trying to figure out how and why the case was resolved. Now let's 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 think about this. A 13-year-old girl goes to the police with her and with her 16-year-old friend. I'm assuming they were together the way this was written. They tell the police that they engaged with relations with a grown man. The police go to the scene of the crime, write some type of report, and absolutely nothing happens. And so much so that the current deputy sheriff has no idea what's going on. The people that work the case no longer work for the department and they have to investigate the investigation to see what happened. I I must admit, I'm somewhat fabricated. What's the word? Flummoxed. <laughs> Fabricasted. You know what I mean. That this type of incompetence, and this is why, this is a perfect case of why black people have a tendency to not trust the police and also as we saw in an earlier radical report there is also reason to suspect that in many cases predators especially sexual predators of underage people appear to be protected by the police when we have cases like this where no one can explain what happened despite the fact that a crime was obviously committed let's move forward the next time a sex related allegation emerged was six years later on december 13 2017 a report was filed after a 16 year old girl called deputies and threatened to commit suicide 
she told officers Hope had been paying her for relations and blackmailing her into performing additional acts. At the time, she told deputies she had cut off contact with Hope for two weeks, during which he had been spreading information about her on social media. She also told police Hope repeatedly paid 15 and 16 year old girls for relations and filmed the encounters. She went on to say he recruited girls by handing out, handing flyers out, promoting his DJ work, and then bribed them. Six months later, a Florence mother called deputies and said Pope was luring young girls on Facebook and Snapchat with promises of pride, prizes. Excuse me. She told them he had been communicating with her 15-year-old daughter. The most explosive of the reports came just a few days later when a female family member of Pope contacted deputies and said Pope was having relations with minors. Stop right there. So it's obvious. It, it should have been obvious to the police in 2017 that this man was a serial predator and still nothing was done till over a year and a half later. Let's continue. According to the incident report, the family member told deputies Pope paid the girls for relations and posted about it on social media. She reported that it had been happening for a long period of time, quote unquote, but had recently been getting worse. She told officers she had screenshots of pornographic posts and said she personally knew some of the man's victims and her friends were harassing her about Pope's behavior. She also told them she had thought about committing that she had thought about offing herself if something wasn't done. The family member told officials Pope occasionally sent her explicit messages and touched her when he hugged her. Deputy said the tipster's mother was also present for the interview and was concerned about the situation for some time. So, okay, we stop right here. It's again, I, I'm probably repeating myself because I'm I'm just astounded at how long this was going on. I mean, the preponderance of the evidence portrayed a man as a sexual predator years before anything was done. Deputies said they reviewed some of the messages and confirmed they were explicit. An investigator later wrote that two other family members could be considered victims because they were connected on social media with Pope, who posted videos and pictures of obscene materials for minors to view. The more recent three reports fall within the current investigation time frame. It's unclear why it took more than a year for Pope to be arrested when after the ac after the accusation surfaced. The non-sexual reports generated by the sheriff's office were for various other incidents. According to one report, Pope was arrested after deputies discovered marijuana and large sums of cash in his home. And another Pope was accused of following an ex-girlfriend. Pope also called deputies several times after his home and car were broken into. In one incident, he said $500 had been taken out of his car. According to reports, the last time Pope called police was 2017. A SLED background check shows his record actually starting in 1995 with a conviction of impersonating a police officer. In 1996, he was convicted of promoting prostitution with a minor and sentenced to jail time, but the time was suspended. From 1997 to 2011, he was convicted on a myriad of charges, including ones like disorderly conduct and unlawful use of a telephone. In 2018, he was convicted of cruelty to children and sentenced to the time he had already served in jail. 
Okay. So, what really wasn't said in national media at the time of this this case breaking was that this person was well known to the police, has a long and very criminal record, and has dodged any major conviction up to this point, including to this very day as we speak. The idea, now that I read this, the idea that this is just some random guy who just targeted random um, victims and just happened to get away with it because nobody was paying attention, that narrative is false. This person has a long track record and a long history and is very well known to the law enforcement community in South Carolina and yet he was still able to get away with these crimes for nearly a decade. All right, we're going to look at a um, another report from that time frame with uh, from Atlanta Black Star. It says 693 bodies, all black. White South Carolina man accused of trafficking, kidnapping underage girls for sex withdrawals request for bond may have more victims says a popular south carolina promoter and disc jockey appeared in court monday on human trafficking child sex crimes charges florence station wbtw reported jason roger pope remains in jail without bond after withdrawing his request for a bond hearing pope's attorney mary parham didn't give a reason for the withdrawal the local DJ who was arrested in August of 2019 faces three counts of trafficking in persons, three counts of first degree criminal sexual conduct, a count of a count each of kidnapping, second degree sexual conduct with a minor, and promoting the prostitution of a minor. Arrest warrants obtained by WMBF News show that between July 2017 and July 2019, police say Pope coerced four underage girls to performing. Uh, illicit acts at his home 17 year old victim told police he gave her money and drugs and other items in exchange for these activities one of the suspects victims as listed is listed at the age of 13 i suspected a long time ago that things weren't right over there because of who he had coming in and out said a long-term neighbor of pope's who recalled several young looking girls stopping by his home. They looked like they were very young, underage maybe. Photos posted to the suspect's Facebook page, which at the at this time was still active, shows Pope posing and partying with mostly young African American women in an album titled DJ Kid Parties and Girls Part One. In one of the pictures he seen rabbit and young woman uh, by the derriere as she straddles him in her underwear. He pulls another girl's pants down in a separate photo exposing her thong. According to a Facebook screenshot, Pope re reportedly bragged, I'm 36 with 693 bodies, all black females, what about you WBU I'm assuming that's what about you in September the party promoter reportedly um, assaulted a 16 year old identified in an arrest warrant as 8B is accused of paying the team for illicit activities a similar incident occurred months earlier when a 14 year old claimed, claimed that Pope paid her for these activities Again, this is a report from that same time frame um, with pretty much the same information. It just doesn't go as in-depth as how far back this goes. And on the internet, Mr. Pope was bragging. This is where we get the 600, the nearly 700 number that would come out later. Now, 
maybe he was exaggerating maybe he wasn't there's really no way of knowing but it's obvious that he had access to money access to drugs that he was known and popular and was able to get a large number of girls and women to engage in these activities with him now let's look at our third article and this is from December of 2021 says Florence's DJ kid trying to intimidate trafficking victims from behind bars according to a prosecutor Jason DJ kid Pope who's indicted on 19 charges in connection with a human trafficking case in Florence appeared in court Wednesday for a bond reduction hearing he was once again denied bond. South Carolina Circuit Court Judge Craig Brown, who presided over hearing, could revisit the situation in April if Pope's case isn't tried. The 42-year-old appeared in court virtually from the Florence County Detention Center, where he's been held for the past 28 months. Attorneys with the South Carolina Attorney General's Office said Pope's initial bond hearing in 2020 that he's a very dangerous person. I think that's an understatement. Prosecutors told the judge Wednesday that Pope was trying to harass, intimidate, threaten, and bully victims, even while behind bars. Says, quote, from jail, where he is right now, he is getting the word out and still trying to intimidate victims. He does not recognize that anything he did was wrong. And if he were to be let out of jail, there's absolutely no way to protect the public from Jason Roger Pope, said Heather Weiss, South Carolina Deputy Attorney General. Pope's lawyer, Rose Murray Parham, said that Pope doesn't have a violent bone in his body. That's what she's paid to say, of course. Parham said Pope would live with his mother in Florence if the judge had given him bond. I don't see how living with his mother is going to stop him from engaging in the activities that he was engaging in. But this doesn't actually make any sense. Parham said Pope's father recently died of cancer and his mother had been caring for him the past year and a half until his death. She said Pope's mother could monitor her son while he was out on bond. Parham told Judge Pope told the judge, excuse me, Pope has a childlike mind in many ways. He just doesn't understand, Your Honor, because these were his girlfriends. He thought he had loving relationships with them. He bought them gifts. They had uh, consensual relations. Everything in this case is consensual. Conduct. Now the, now the state alleges that some of these girls were underage. And what what the defense would say is every girl represented to him that they were of age and had a relationship with him and accepted gifts from him and all of that again your honor jason he has a mentality of a teenager he is on the same level as them okay stop right there so it appears from what i just read the crux of the defense's case is that mr pope um has some type of um cognitive um limitations which l limit him from understanding that he's an adult and they are children i have i i mean i i'll say this that's a creative defense um i you know i'm, I'm really left speechless that <sighs> I understand his, his attorney is paid to defend him in this case. But this is really, I mean, this is really one of those cases that's pretty much open and shut. And any excuses that we make for an adult male in his 30s and 40s who is popular and use his popularity and is known around the country and has a long history of criminal activity. <sighs> Using these type of excuses to excuse his behavior i it, it's just mind-boggling to me I, i'm not gonna lie i'm just again i man i'm just astounded at the audacity 
let's get back to uh, the report. Weiss said a mental evaluation on Pope found that he was able to stand trial. Parham told the judge she is trying to get a private or independent evaluation done on Pope. Weiss said that when the second evaluation is done, they'll be able to move forward with setting a trial date for Pope. Judge Brown gave Parham until April 11th for the evaluation to have the evaluation done. Brown also said a possible trial could be held in the spring as well. Warren said Pope recruited women and underage girls and had relations with them on various occasions between 2017 and 2019, providing the victims with money and gifts in exchange. They also say he had some victims, held some victims, excuse me, against their wills in Darlington and Florence in order to get them to perform such acts. So now, real quick, we are going to watch a video of the initial report on this case. Law enforcement is asking for the public's help with information on more potential victims and connection to a human trafficking case. They say 42 year old Jason Pope allegedly recruited a minor through social media for prostitution. Arrest warrants say Pope confined the victim to a room within a home in Darlington. That arrest warrant goes on to say that he compelled the victim to engage in sex acts with the intent to extort and threaten the victim to perform fur further sexual acts for money. Police believe there are more victims out there. Anyone with information is asked to contact SLED. Pope is behind bars in the Florence County Jail where bond has been denied on all charges. So, as we see, um, again, everyone seems to agree with the charges. Everyone seems to agree what's going on, and yet this case has been lingering on and on. Now we come up to, okay, three days ago, July 17th, updated July 18th trial delayed again for Florence County man accused of trafficking and it says a judge granted a motion Monday morning to delay the sex trafficking trial of Jason Pope a Florence County man accused of more than a dozen sex trafficking counts in 2020 let's stop right there it's 2023 and it just like something just occurred to me just now occurred to me how this delaying this case really helps benefit the perpetrator when i when i think about it you have the crux of this case is really going to come down to the age of the victims because according to her according to his defense these were consensual acts. And so if you bring adult women in this case, as opposed to young girls, it changes the look of the case. And of course it changes the victim that in essence, it almost changes the, the identity of the victims. So let's think about it, right? If Mr. Pope had relations with a 13 year old girl, and then it took a year for him to get arrested and now we're up to four years into the case where the case has yet to be fully adjudicated and a verdict rendered that 14 year old girl would be 18 19 years old and does not appear the same way as she would have if this case was adjudicated swiftly similarly if you take a 16 year old girl or 17 year old girl who's underage and suddenly you have before you a 20, 21 year old woman, college age, it makes the case not look as bad as it is. And I'm not saying that they are intentionally delaying it for that reason. I'm just saying it's, it's very interesting when you think about it because the crux of this case really comes down to the underage girls 
the little girls, the children that Mr. Pope was preying on. And if you present victims who are no longer children, it could change the perspective of any prospective jurors about the victims in this case. So, we're going to get back to the article. Pope, known as DJ Kidd, had been scheduled to go on trial on Monday, but his attorney asked for a continuance based on a report from an independent expert that said that he had been diagnosed with autism and is incompetent to stand trial. However, two reports by a psychiatrist expert hired by prosecutors determined that Pope is competent to stand trial. He says here, this is a serious case. My client has serious charges. Rose Parham, Pope's attorney says, I don't think it's fair. After hearing from both sides on Monday, the judge granted a continuance. A new trial date has not been set and the next step, step in the case remains unclear. She says, I feel sorry for him. I think he has a mentality of a 12 or 13 year old. And I mean, despite the fact that he's a 46 year old man, Parham said, uh, to, according to her, he has a mentality of a very young boy and autistic. And our state doesn't do enough for people with mental health problems. I'm going to stop right there, brother and sister. I'm going to just be honest. I'm disgusted by the defense. I think this is a... um, I think she's trying to pull a fast one. I don't believe for a moment in the... uh, the veracity of her statements in regards to um, Mr. Pope's cognitive abilities. I believe he's just a, a predator and the way this case is looking as they drag this on and on I believe that the further we get into the case the more likely it is that he either will not be convicted or he will receive some type of reduced charge but I want to real quickly because they have this video here I want to play this video so we can hear this uh, two minute report about this case from um, I believe this is news WBTW news 13 so we're going to play this report very quickly spectrum disorder is not a reason to find somebody incompetent. First at six, the trial of a Florence County man right there in that jumpsuit charged with human trafficking and sex crimes is delayed once again. And thanks for joining us at six. I'm Bob Jubeck. And I'm Megan Miller. A trial date for Jason Pope, also known as DJ Kid, may not be known until next month. News 13's Andrea Gibbons is live in Florence right now. And Andrea, I understand that this delay is over the results of a recent psychiatric evaluation. Yes, I'm standing outside the Florence County Judicial Center and tensions were high this morning in the courtroom as the Jason Pope trial was delayed for the third time. This is a a serious case. My client has serious charges and I don't think it's fair. Jason Pope was charged in 2019 for more than a dozen crimes that include human trafficking of minors and first degree criminal sexual conduct. His attorney, Rosemary Parham, argued Pope was given a psych evaluation a week ago and the results said that he had autism. She says getting the results last week was not enough time to begin trial today. She also said that Pope has the mentality of a young boy and an outside psych expert says he's had autism since a child and is not competent to stand trial. I I feel very sorry for him. And um, I think he has the mentality of a 12 or 13 year old. I mean, despite the fact that he's he's 46 years old, he has the mentality of a very a young young boy and autistic. And you know, our state just does not do enough for people with mental health problems. Heather Wise, representing the South Carolina Attorney General's office, says that Pope was given a psych evaluation in 2020 that also said he had autism. And the information in the new evaluation is not different. It hadn't changed. He simply has an autism spectrum disorder. And the case law is very straightforward on that, that an autism spectrum disorder is not a reason to find somebody incompetent. 
This is the third time the trial has been delayed, once by the prosecutor and another time by the defense. Wise also said that several of the witnesses and experts were prepared to speak today. The South Carolina Attorney General's office says that the judge expects to set a new date at the end of August. C keep, count on us for updates. Reporting live in Florence, Andre Gibbons, News 13. So there you have it, brothers and sisters. This case will be delayed once again. Uh, it appears that we will not hear anything until next month. We will not hear anything until next month. Sorry about that. And again, I will keep you all updated to the best of my ability. So with that, brothers and sisters, I thank you all for listening. I thank you all for subscribing. Thank you all for your support. And we will close out here and we will definitely follow this case as much as we can until it is finally adjudicated because it is very very important with that i say a bb for hodier and straight black pride thank you for watching this video don't forget to like share and subscribe also follow us on our other social media platforms on instagram we're at dc.radical1 on Twitter, we're at DC underscore radical underscore O-N-E. And the cash app is dollar sign DC radical, the numeral 